Okay, lovely. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Simon Vegro, and I welcome you to the first ever Redbourne Community News Bite. This is actually, we're watching evolution in action here, because if you think back to the community calls of mm. last year, which were all on the phone, very old technology, although wonderful technology, we're now on Zoom and with an exciting new format. And as you can see, those of you that are looking in visually, I'm even wearing a shirt for the first time in nearly a year. So this is one of the disadvantages of, uh, of being on Zoom is that people can see me, which is a bit, sorry about that. Not, not much I can do about the way I look. Our wonderful producer has reminded me to say a few things. So I'm going to read these out, check I don't forget anything. People joining are automatically muted with the video turned off. If you want to preserve your anonymity still further, you can change your name in Zoom. You can use the chat function to send messages to me, which I'll endeavor to read, but please be patient. As so this is the first time we're doing it. We're learning as we go along and we may not get everything right. Certainly I'm quite good at not getting everything right. This is being live streamed to the Red Border's Facebook page, which is a bit scary. So it's now going global. Um, and later on, I believe we'll be on the Active in Redbourne website as an audio file. If I've forgotten anything, I'm inviting our aforementioned wonderful producer to chip in right now. Slight pause, we're getting a nice smile. That's fine. I think I've remembered everything, good stuff. So what is this wonderful new format? It's a series of quick fire updates and thoughts from the movers and shakers in the village, the health centre who obviously play a hugely important role for us, Redbourne Care Group similarly, the parish council who are quietly making things happen behind the scenes, Will Gibbs and others from time to time, and all will be revealed over the coming weeks, and your own ideas will be most welcome. As I said, we've not done this before, we're the first one we've ever done it, so if you've got ideas of how we can improve, please let us know. In our advertising, we also mentioned fun, which the Beatles fans amongst you will know is the one thing that money can't buy. If anyone knows what song that comes from, by the way, please put it in chat and I'll give you a prize. Um, we're delighted to reveal, when we're talking about fun, that the Redbourne players today begin their serial, The Snatch Ups following the lives of the Snatch Up family, who I'm sure will all come to love. And I can't wait for that. And that will go global and it will be just a general international masterpiece. I'm absolutely sure. I don't want to big it up any more than that, but that's how good it's going to be. So without further ado, we're going to start this week with Liz Richards from the Health Centre. Uh, good morning, Liz. Morning. Thank how are you today? Me. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Good. Thanks ever so much for joining us, Liz. I know you're in a hurry today. Well, you're always in a hurry because you've got so much <laughs> important work going on. So, and you, and I think you said you had to dial off pretty quickly. So, I do, unfortunately. So I won't be able to stay for the whole meeting. So thank you for letting me go first. Um, no worries. I do appreciate it. No um, worries. I just saw. So I suppose the obvious thing to ask is because each of these little sessions is only a few minutes long. Is is how are things going, and and what important messages do you have for the? village and how's vaccination going big big, big yeah, topic so, um we're all okay um it is quite a, a busy time for us at the moment um with the gps and nurses are working really really hard we've got lots of poorly people as you can imagine yeah. and all of our normal referral routes into secondary care are sort of being met with a bit of a bottleneck because of the covid situation in secondary care so it is quite stressful but um we're all managing to keep well and um got various things in place at the practices to bubble people up so that our staff um we can you know maintain a service basically um the covid vaccination program um in st Albans is going well um i'm not sure if your uh, listeners are aware but all of the st Albans um and redbourne practices uh, join together to um collaborate mm -hmm. to be able to deliver a um uh, a um sorry my phone's just ringing just turn that off always the way always the way yeah. sorry about that um so they've all joined together so that we can uh, deliver a service um to everybody in st albans and redbourne um so we have now and it's being done at batchwood hall um which is in st albans we've now done um all of our over 80s um our care homes uh, care home workers frontline health uh, workers and our 75s to 79s will have been done as well by this Friday. Oh, so, uh, so we're doing really well. Um, uh, the, the next group will be our housebounds, and some of them are being done this afternoon, actually, um, which is good. So that's started. Uh, and then it will be on to the next cohort of the 70 to 74s and the clinically extremely vulnerable, um, which is quite a big group. Uh, we're inviting by text message, so patients should expect to uh, receive a text message. Um, those that don't have access to a mobile phone, we are calling them. So don't worry if you don't have access to a mobile phone and can't receive a text message. We are telephoning people because we know if people don't have that access. Um, 
we are aware that there are some scams going around. So um, please, please be careful. Um, it's a message I really want to get across to patients. Um, you will never be asked to pay anything for a coronavirus vaccination. So anything that you receive that is asking for details for payment, it's a scam. Just delete it, okay? Um, and because uh, unfortunately, we are aware of some that are going around at the moment. I think one thing that some patients have found quite confusing is that some patients are also receiving letters centrally from NHS England inviting them to go for a vaccination. Those letters aren't anything to do with us. Um, you are able to take that offer up and those um, appointments wouldn't be at Batchwood, they'd be at the mass vaccination sites. Um, which and the nearest one to us is in Stevenage. Um, there's also um, some local pharmacies that are part of that um, uh, sort of central distribution as well. I think there's one in St Albans that's doing some. So patients are absolutely free to go to those sites if they want to. That's fine. Um, you, we would be updated with um, the fact that you've had the vaccine, so you don't have to worry that the systems aren't joined up. They are. Um, so we would get notification. But we would obviously encourage you to stay local um, and to use the service at Batchwood. But um, obviously, it's patient choice. People are free to go um, to the mass vac sites if they want to. Um, getting quite a lot of communication from patients pleading their case to try and be bumped up the list um, for the vaccine. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, we, we don't have the power to do that. Um, so uh, I'm having to spend quite a lot of time at the moment, um, you know, speaking to patients and listening. And they're all, you know, valid stories, etc. But um, we're not able to do that. It is a case of, um, unfortunately, waiting your turn. Um, just a few things about when you do attend Batchwood, um, it's, uh, it is quite cold up there, so wrap up warm, um, but have uh, some loose clothing on so it's easy to get your arm out. And if you could take your NHS number, if you know it, then that's helpful as well. But if you don't have it, don't worry, um, we'll find you. It just makes it all a bit quicker if you've got your NHS number. And then I suppose the last thing to say about it is that our our biggest problem with the with the whole thing is the supply of the vaccine and you may have heard about this in the in the news um so for instance this week batchwood is only operating on friday because that's the only amount of vaccine that we received this week um so it's a bit frustrating because we're set up to you know be able to deliver six days a week and um but we're only getting a certain amount of supply i think while other areas of the country catch up um so that's hindering things a little bit but uh hopefully the vaccine supply will sort itself out in the next few weeks and we can continue to crack on um which will be good um I hope that helps just a bit of an update about the vaccine supply. Um, I know it's confusing for people and you know everybody's desperate to get it um but you know please wait your turn we will contact you um and yeah the quicker that we get everyone done the better for everyone really brilliant liz thank you what you, it sounds like you're absolutely on it so well done and thank you for all the brilliant work can i just ask a couple of real quick ones sure if somebody for whatever reason hasn't heard i don't I, i'm right to think you don't want them contacting you do you because you're just they're just clogging up the phone lines is that is that correct um, if they really, really think that they should have heard, then obviously do contact us. If you can contact us via email, that's better because it eases right. up the phone lines a little bit. But if you if you don't have access to that kind of communication, then fine. Um, do telephone us. Um, the best person to speak to about um, all the vaccinations um, for COVID is Sandra, who is our social prescriber. Um, and she's based at um, Redbourne um, Health Centre. Um, and she's been coordinating the invitation for us so um if you really really think like so if you're sitting there and listening to this and you're sort of 82 and you haven't been called then i want to hear from you because i think i've done all of those um but if if you're um you know sort of 70 to 74 and just wondering when you're going to have a vaccine then i'd plead with you to sort of just um wait to be contacted super thanks liz and one more question if i may uh, just I know there is a it seems strange on there is a world beyond COVID so yes. let's park it just for a minute for, for, for sort of general health concerns and normal if there is such a word normal day-to-day -day health issues yeah uh, how's the health centre cope with that any any particular 
way people should handle it differently or how's that working no i mean yeah we we are open i mean we have to provide 20 percent of um the staff up to batchwood uh, for the vaccination uh, program so that obviously does have an impact on the service that we can deliver day to day um because we're losing 20 percent of the staff up up to batchwood but um we may we've managed to staff Vax, uh, batchwood with people doing overtime the doctors and nurses have been fantastic so um so it, it isn't impacting us as 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 much as i thought it would um so we the message is we are still open we're obviously still mainly telephone consultation but if the gp or nurse wants to see you they will bring you in um but it, you will have to have a telephone call first um so that that's how we're operating to keep everybody safe um, so do please, if you have, you know, any normal uh, things that you would phone the doctor about, don't sit on them. Please yeah. call us um, and we'll help. OK, so um, the notion that we're shut, that's not that's not the case. Um, if, you, if you have something that you're worried about, I'd encourage you to get in touch. Lovely, Liz. Fantastic update. Thank you. Thank you. And so thank you for so much for the brilliant work you're doing for the village. We all appreciate it. So well done. No Keep problem. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. And I hope the rest of the meeting goes well. Thank you. We hope to have you on again sometime if you can spare the time. Thanks, Liz. Have well, a good day. Bye. Bye bye. Wonderful. What a wonderful health centre. OK, I'd now like to chat to the lovely Sally Bartlett, if I may. Sally, if you're uh, ready for that. Are you still on mute, Sally? Sally's still on mute. Mute. I'm on mute. Sorry, I'm unmuted. Sure, yes, sorry. Unmuted. Yeah. I wonder, Good how morning. There, I wonder how many Zoom calls there have been where, where the thing is, you're on mute has been said. If anyone has that statistic, please put it in chat. Um, <laughs> so Sometimes it's a good thing if you're on mute, it is, Simon. It is indeed. So good morning, Sally. How are you today? Well, good morning, everybody. Yes, I'm very good. Thank you very much. For, and thanks for inviting me to the first of this new um, series of community calls, which is delightful. I would actually really like to add huge thanks to Liz and Sandra and all of the team at the um, health centre. They're, I mean, they're doing a phenomenal job. And if anybody contacts us, um, we need to contact them. They get back to us very quickly with very useful, accurate information. So, I mean, I can't thank them enough. It's brilliant to be able to work with them. So it is um, such trying times, isn't it, Sally? I mean, it's so it must be so horrendously difficult for those guys to, to do what they're doing and do such a good job. So perhaps yeah, I don't know how they that's right. I don't know how they're managing it, but they are and they're doing a fantastic job. So um, there's just a couple of things I wanted to share with you this morning. Um, as many of you know, we have been busy arranging transport to the vaccination centre, um, the Batchwood Hall one and the Hartenden public halls. Um, so we are working in consultation with the surgery. Um, we're also arranging transport to other medical appointments, which actually now seem to be further and further afield this day, these days, presumably because the local hospitals are full. Um, and quite often they're cancelled and we have to rearrange. But we are very keen to help people get to their appointments. So please, you know, don't hesitate to call us if you need um, transport. The other thing that I just wanted to share with you this morning was this matter of uh, a conversation. And I discovered um, that actually a conversation is really important for our well-being. Now, that might sound very obvious to many of you, but the research I looked at, it suggested that even the most introverted amongst us should seek out someone to talk to at, ev at some point every day. And I discovered this when I was writing the article for February's Common Round. And one study I looked at indicated that merely passing the time of day, talking to another person, could actually improve our cognitive functions in much the same way that brain teasing exercises do. I mean, who knew that small talk apparently makes us better problem solvers. So actually talking about the weather or recounting your day, it could be as beneficial as doing a crossword, which I was delighted about because it lets me off not being able to complete a crossword. So this week I wanted to highlight our relatively new service, which is friendly walks and talks. 
This is when a volunteer makes a regular phone call. It's an opportunity to have a conversation with someone other than a family member or someone in your immediate household. The feedback has been really interesting and we find that the volunteer usually enjoys the chat as much if not more than the person who's called. Um, now it's a bit cold to be out and about at the moment but again if any of you want a companion to walk with, it could be 15-20 minutes, a bit of fresh air around the common, um, you could even be on an electric scooter, uh, whatever form of transport you're using, it is an opportunity to talk to another person, adhering to government guidelines, of course. Um, but just give us a call because we've got lots of volunteers who are very keen to do this, even out in the snow and the biting wind. So just take us up on the offer. Um, and that's all from me this week, Simon. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Sally. Well, when you say that's all, I mean, I suppose I wanted to add, you're also doing a wonderful job, aren't you? And talking about managing difficult situations, that you and the whole care group are doing such a fantastic job for the village. So thank you on behalf of all of us. Thank you. Um, any, any, anything else, Sally? Is that, is that it for you today? You're, you're happy with that? If everybody's happy with that, I'm then happy. I'll let, let other people have a turn. Lovely. Well, thanks, Sally. We we'll look forward to having you on again next week then, and hopefully you can stay on for the rest of the call. Thank you, Sally. OK, so I'd now like to go to uh, Will, if I may, this morning. Morning, Will. Good morning, Simon. Hi. How are you? How are you today? I'm really well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good stuff. Now, it, when we did this in sort of uh, sort of community call version one, of course, we had a specific general topic. You had some homework from time to time and bits and pieces, <laughs> but we, and you did very well, by the way. So well done. Uh, I, think, I think you got an A minus for the Keats one. Uh, maybe yeah. an A. Well, yeah, I'm still brushing up on that, Simon. Good stuff. Um, but of course, we haven't really got a, a particular topic anymore. Uh, there is one thing I thought I'd mention, which is which you uh, you may want to have a quick thought about, which is I um, today is the uh, day that Auschwitz was liberated. Not a particularly cheerful topic, obviously, more cheerful in as much as it was liberated, but it does make you think about all sorts of things. It certainly made me think. But I just wonder whether you had any particular thought you wanted to share with us today or, or anything you had in mind or... Yeah, I, 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 I suppose the last couple of I, I don't know about you, but uh, for, for me, um, the month of January is always a tough month. Um, you've had Christmas and New Year and everything that, that goes with that and things to look forward to. And perhaps, you know, January is a month where you try and uh, stick to the New Year's resolutions. And uh, perhaps there isn't quite so much to look forward to. And the days are quite dark and short and, and, and so on. I just find it quite a tough um, month anyway, never mind what's going on at the moment, this this um, particular um, year. But um, I've just been reflecting the last few days about the importance of play. And they always say that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Um, and for me, one of the ways that I kind of get through this time of the year is um, enjoying some sport. So I've been listening to um, England playing cricket against Sri Lanka, and that's been great. Um, Very good. And I love the Six Nations rugby because that's a real oasis. It's something to really get um, a lot of pleasure and enjoyment for, for me anyway. I know others might not be so keen. Um, and I love basketball as well, which is in, in full um, swing at this time of the year. So um, that, that, that sort of helps to get, get through this time of the year. But um, because of the snow last weekend, um, uh, it was just so amazing in Redbourne. Um, fantastic scenes of people enjoying being outside and, um, and, and family, sort of parents and children together. Um, and I, I think as what I saw is as many adults as children enjoying making um, snowmen and and uh, and so on. It's sort of just that um, importance of play and doing things that perhaps are, are innocent and fun and so on. It rather sort of offered the, a sort of counterpoint to um, summer holidays on the beach where it always seems to be the dads who are so um so active and keen to do the sand castles <laughs> and so on long after their children have wandered off and gone back in the sea or whatever they're still digging away and i just thought actually play is a really important thing um for many of us our boundaries and our routines are all a bit sort of up in the air at the moment there are some people who it's all play and and they long to get out and do some of the things that they uh um, genuine, gen, generally would be doing so uh, they probably never want to see another piece of point stitch in their lives <laughs> and then there are others who are kind of working from home and actually it's quite hard to switch off from that because you don't go anywhere you work from home and then how do you create some boundaries how do you still 
um, stick to some routines where you work for sort of certain times and then leave that to one side and then switch off and, and enjoy some relaxation and so on. I was thinking about this idea of uh, the word uh, recreation or recreation and it's a really important word because it reminds us that actually in our playing in our kind of uh, downtime actually we are being regenerated we're being refreshed and renewed and so on and that's really um, really important so I ju I just just something I've been thinking about um, at the moment the importance of a good work-life balance and ensuring we have some play and some fun. I know we're going to enjoy something from the Red Bull players uh, in a short while, so that will fit in with that. I just want to finish with a, um, a quote from our local boy, G George Bernard Shaw, who said this, uh, we don't stop playing because we get grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Very good. Yes, that's that is so, so true, isn't it? So true. Well, thank you, Will. And uh, did you make, build any snowmen yourself, by the way, or, or you just we, we, we have uh, we have got one in the garden, um, which uh, I can't claim any credit for. That was mostly Darcy's work with a bit of help from Claire and not much help from the dog. Um, but as the snow melts, it, it, it's amazing. It's just the snowmen that seem to be left at the moment, like these little sort of pinnacles standing up on the grass where everything else has sort of melted away, where it's still packed and consolidated. But I guess it'll disappear in the next few hours. Well, I'm, I'm talk, talking about the dog, by the way, but we're missing the dog. Is the, do is the dog OK? Because normally it always barks when we're on a community call and we haven't heard a bark today. It, I, unbelievable. He, he's two feet away from me. Um, just at the end of at the other side of my desk, um, he's having a morning nap. Um, but uh, week by week, let's just play it by ear because I okay. can't guarantee anything. Um, he's the worst behaved dog in Redbourne, so I'm sure he'll live up to that reputation before long. Well, worst behaved dog in Redbourne, that's saying something. There's a lot of... Ill <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Well, thank you very much, Will. <laughs> uh, perhaps next week, with the you talked about the Six Nations. Let's have a little mini chat about that because I think it starts all being well the following weekend, doesn't it? It does. I, I think England the first Scotland. game's uh, the 6th and 7th of um, Feb. That's so right. So let's have a little Six Nations chat next week, shall we? Maybe we can talk about uh, who we think is going to win and all this sort of thing. Absolutely. So uh, love, love that. Thank you, Will. Thank you very so much for joining us always. And catch up with you next week. Thank you. OK, and now uh, I'm really a question follow that. We've had three wonderful contributions. But last but not least, of course, before we come to the next such as is the uh, lovely David Mitchell. Chair of our parish council. Good morning, David. Good morning, Simon. Um, I'm just thinking. The last time I called you lovely, I'm not sure when that was actually. But uh, anyway, how are well, you today? Not many people call me lovely these days. <laughs> <laughs> how ever. are you today? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm very well. well. Good stuff. Pleased to hear it. So, thank you again, obviously, we, um, to, for agreeing to come on today, and uh, and just for everybody else's benefit, we we uh, just to remind you, we hope to have the health centre come on every week when they can. Obviously, they're very busy. Hopefully the care group can come every week as well, and also the, uh, someone from the parish council. Uh, we're actually hoping to have a little row to see how the other parish councils might want to do it, but um, our chairs agreed to do it today. So thank you, David. So I suppose, I suppose my starter for 10 is, um, can you tell us a little bit about what the parish council have been up to during lockdown and any particular messages you want to get out to all our listeners today? That's a big question. Start with. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, obviously um, when it all, uh, happened around about this time last year, we realised that uh, it was going to be important to put uh, as much in place as that, that we could. So we quickly uh, called a, a, a council meeting and, and Sally and Will kindly attended. And it was quite um, clear that actually there was a very good system in place already that just had to adapt to the coronavirus. So really, you know, the, the, what the parish council did was help fund some of the initial uh, problems that were going to arise and, and, and no doubt Sally will tell me soon that uh, that money's um, beginning to um, uh, disappear and they'll probably want some more and obviously that's something that we've been uh, budgeting for because that's another thing we've been doing in the last couple of months is looking at our budget which is severely hit by uh, Covid. Fortunately we've got a lot of um, reserves i mean say fortunately it's been sort of good management really to make sure that we had some money in reserve for an emergency and and i've often wondered what that emergency might be well you know one came along yeah so we, we we've managed to sort of divert some of our um general funds into specific projects that hopefully will help the, you know the response to the coronavirus situation plus 
uh, we had to consider um, what we charge for our capital tax, what we call the precept too, because we're aware that people are, are losing their jobs, which means they're not contributing to the council tax. And um, it's, it's roughly about two and a half percent of, um, of people living in Redbourne have lost their jobs or not contributing to the council tax for next year, which meant that, uh, you know, the rest of us would have to compensate. So we decided that rather than putting our council tax up significantly, we had actually just put it up a small amount in line with inflation and, and again dig into our reserves to sort of uh, make sure that we we met um, in the money that we need to operate the parish council in the coming year so that's the sort of thing that's a uh, coronavirus has thrown up it's obviously changed quite a lot really the way we work the parish center is closed again which is a shame it is actually being used by um, health organizations who are legally allowed to do that and obviously we want help there and uh, also Gary Atkinson has, has uh, set up this uh, computer refurbishment recycling setup at the parish centre which is great because that means that uh, uh, school children or, or older people that don't actually have a computer he can now supply them with with one um, obviously um, best thing to do I guess is, is speak to the care group about that or if you've seen Gary, Gary Atkinson's own posts on Facebook you can contact him directly so that, that's great. Um, I, I guess the, you know other things that we've, we've been doing is our neighbour plan because um, the we were waiting for the district council's local plan to come to fruition and it didn't it failed the examination um, which has rather put the um, kibosh on our old neighbourhood plan because that had some uh, small development areas in the green belt and it needed a local it needed a local plan to actually bring those forward so we're going ahead now with our neighbourhood plan regardless without any development sites in but it will be a blueprint for development in the future um, and you know it's a vision for Redbourne in the next couple of decades so hopefully some people contributed to our, our, our um, survey that we did uh, um, recently which was about our vision statement that will be followed up in due course and hopefully by the end of the year we'll get our local plan in place all of which of course is voted on by residents so at some point there'll be a referendum and it'll only go through if it's what rev, rev if what if it's what residents want and so far you know it does seem to be fitting the bill um you know the other the other thing that cropped up was uh, cumberland gardens a lot of people wondered what on earth has been going on in cumberland gardens because we had to close it just before christmas well what, what happened was our groundsman john pigeon was in there one day and um poking holes poking his rod down the ground and finding huge holes um which obviously caused a great deal of concern i think it's to do with the weather i think it was to do with all the rain and of course, initially, we had no idea whether it was a serious problem or quite a simple problem. It's turned out to be a relatively simple problem. Turned out actually that some holes were filled in with wood um, many decades ago. And of course, they rotted and washed away. So the ground was collapsing. Unfortunately, we lost a yew tree um, that was leaning over and the roots were coming out. So that had to be um, chopped down. Um, which is a great shame because it's always a shame to lose a you know a mature tree like that but we should be able to open Cumberland and Gardens properly uh, very soon now we're going to fill in the holes obviously once we've done that we'll be able to sort of uh, um, take away the restrictions so I guess that's sort of a, a lot of you know what's been happening over the last few months where there's some elections coming up not for the parish council but for the district council I'm not quite sure how that's going to happen, actually, because it's, um, it was intended that it would be a normal election where people would go to their polling stations. But whether come May the 6th, people will be able to do that. So I suggest that people sort of keep an eye on that in case um, the it, we have to all do it by um, postal votes um, and we can't actually attend in person. But I think the election will go ahead, having postponed it last year. I think it's unlikely it'll get postponed again for democratic reasons. We're also hoping to have the uh, Redbourne Parish Council annual meeting, annual parish meeting, which we didn't have last year because that normally takes place in May. And uh, we really uh, weren't sort of uh, sure how, that, how we could do it. Well, we think we, we know what to do now. So come the second week of May, we'll be having an annual parish meeting to which everybody, every resident in Redbourne, is, is welcome to attend. 
Uh, it's a chance to hear what the parish council has been doing, hear some report, reports, hear about our financial situation. It may sound a bit dry, but they've usually been quite entertaining in, in the past. Uh, exactly how we do it, we don't know yet, but we'll, we'll work on that. So that's sort of, uh, I think, encapsulates um, pretty much what we've been up to there. Um, Simon and I do by the way know the answer to your Beatles question oh, but I won't on, say man. it well it's can't buy me love no it isn't it isn't, isn't it no you I'm said... sorry no that I'm sorry you failed that one it's it's she's leaving home ah but can't buy me love money, can't, money buy. can't buy me love is the, is the lyric you've got yeah. two lyrics well, maybe yes, they like I, maybe I'm the not... Beatles maybe the Beatles sang a lot about money can't buy me love yeah, they, they certainly mentioned love a fair few times, didn't they? they but the, did. actual, the actual line, fun is the one thing that money can't buy. The actual direct quote is from She's Leaving Home. But I'll, I'll give you a B. OK. But thanks. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept that. OK, thanks, David. Uh, well, listen, thanks for that update. Very comprehensive. We hope to have you back again. Like I said earlier, um, we hope to have different councillors on from time to time. Victoria Mead will be organising that. I think she's on the call somewhere. I can't see her. I, I, am, I am Simon. Oh, morning, Victoria. Morning. Um, so, well, who knows who's going to be on next week? But uh, thank you very much for that, David, and to uh, keep up the good work. So now the artistic piece de résistance, if, I, if my French pronunciation is OK. Um, we, as I said earlier in the call, the wonderful Redbourne players are going to be doing their uh, the snatch ups, um, which is about to go global. Um, at, well, is in fact live as we speak globally and, and is going to be probably the most wonderful serial ever. I don't want to build it up for too much, David. So um, is, is that sort of as OK as an introduction? Um, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so without any more to do, here we have the Snapchats. <laughs> and now we are pleased to introduce our new weekly serial, The Snapchats. Set in the fictional Hertfordshire village of St Mary's, it follows the day-to-day -day lives of the Snapchat family as they cope with the trials and tribulations of life in lockdown. There is romance, horror, scandal, comedy, adventure, and that is just a selection of the box sets that they're currently working their way through. Our story starts in the home of the Snapchats. Brenda Snatcher, her lazy husband Stan, their children Tim and Jane, and living around the corner, Grandad Snatcher, a Second World War veteran who would have been involved in the D-Day landings, fought his way valiantly across Europe, invaded Berlin and returned home a hero if it had all happened several months later and he'd been old enough. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning and Stan, having gone into the garden to throw the used tea bags from the morning brew onto next door's compost heap, has returned to join Brenda around the kitchen table. Come on, Stan, you should at least get dressed. It's 11 o'clock. Oh, what's the point, Brenda? There's nowhere to go. We're not allowed to see anyone, so I might as well spend the day in my pyjamas. I don't know why you're complaining. It'll mean less washing. But you need to get into a routine. I was speaking to the vicar, you know, Phil Tibbs, and he said it was very important that people establish a routine to put some order back into their life. But, but I have got a routine. I get up and lounge about the house all day in my pyjamas watching the telly. That's not a routine. In the first lockdown, you got dressed every day and went outside and did things. Well, that's because the weather was nice. It was summer and a heat wave. It's completely different now. It's winter and it's freezing. It was even snowing at the weekend. Well, that's even more reason why a routine is so important. You could have been down on the common building a snowman like everyone else. Maybe you could volunteer for something. That would get you out. The pharmacy is always looking for people to deliver prescriptions. And I found my time as an assistant at the new community library really rewarding until it had to close. But volunteer for something? You must be joking. The last time I volunteered for something, I ended up inadvertently posting for the before photograph in a how to lose weight advert. Never again. Now, where's the laptop? I need to reorder my hemorrhoid cream. I've got a really bad case of the old farmer Giles. Ooh. You know, I'd forgotten how riveting it was to have a conversation with you. 
Anyway, you can't have the laptop as Jane's using it. She is in her final year at school and needs it for her online lessons. So she has priority. You can have it when she's finished. I don't know why they had to close the schools in the first place. I thought the children hardly got any symptoms. They can still spread it. What if she brought it home and gave it to Grandad? Grandad? He survived an outbreak of bubonic plague. He's had every tropical disease known to man. I mean, how do you catch yellow monkey fever on a routine trip to Sainsbury's? <laughs> the doctor said he must have been in contact with a howler monkey. On the number 34 bus? What was it doing, collecting the fares? Anyway, where is he? He's usually around for his mid-morning cuppa by now. Grandad's gone down to Greyhound Meadow. Apparently he's found a leak in his allotment. Mm, well, I'm not surprised at his age. And he's been getting very friendly with that Mrs Podworthy. Maybe he's asked her to help him sow his winter veg. Oh, I'll bet he has, the dirty old man. Anyway, the good news is he'll be getting his jab soon. The NHS has been really efficient at running its vaccine clinic at Batchwood. It must be a real comfort to the older people after shielding for such a long time. I was speaking to Mrs Busybody and she said that her neighbour's friend's sister, who had that affair with a virgin engineer, overheard someone in the chip shop saying they knew someone who went yesterday. Yeah, maybe I'll get mine soon. I'm bound to be given priority given my pre-existing medical conditions. I'm not sure piles and excessive flatulence count. And don't change the subject. You need to get out and about. And if you don't fancy volunteering, why don't you do some fundraising? There are loads of good causes in the village, like the community group, for instance. Fundraising? You mean like that Captain Tom? Well, our garden isn't big enough for a start. Not since you put that ghastly monstrosity in there. It's an ornamental water feature. It's a boy pissing into a fountain. Goodness knows what the neighbours think. It's a replica of the mannequin piss in brothels. But you've never even been to France. And you ate sprouts. OK, then, instead of walking round the garden, you could walk up to the end of the road a hundred times. There's plenty of people round here who would pay good money to see you get off your backside. And you could wear that superhero fancy dress costume you wore last New Year. It's about time it got another outing. Yeah, I'll think about it. Now, where's Tim? Isn't he up yet? I thought I'd let him sleep in. You know he's been depressed since he was put on furlough from his hospitality job and he's really worried they're going to lay him off. Morning, Mum. Morning, Dad. Oh, that's my online lessons done for this morning. Morning, Jane. Guess what? Jessica's mum's been fined £200 for breaking lockdown restrictions. Why? What did she do? She drove to Ashridge to go for a walk with her friend, and when she got there, they were surrounded by police and fined for making an unnecessary journey. That sounds a bit harsh. And if that wasn't bad enough, they were accused of having a picnic as, as they had brought takeaway coffees with them. Oh, I don't know what this country's coming to. First, a scotch egg's a substantial meal, and then a coffee is a picnic. I blame the government. No one knows what the rules are anymore. But £200, that's a lot of money. Well, she's hoping to get it rescinded by proving that she was a sandwich short of a picnic. Oh, well, that shouldn't be too difficult. She's never been the sharpest tool in the box. Anyway, Jane, guess what your dad's going to do? He's going to raise money for the community group by walking to the end of the road and back 100 times, dressed as the Incredible Hulk. Oh, the Incredible Bulk, more like it. Anyway, Dad, I think that's a really good idea. You need some exercise now you don't walk to the cricketers and the holly bush every day. Very funny. Mum, have you been panic buying toilet rolls again? They're everywhere. We need to be prepared, Tim. We don't know how long this lockdown's going to last. But how many do we need? There must be 50 rolls up here. 
You won't be saying that if we have to self-isolate for 14 days. Not with your dad's toilet habits. It's not my fault if I have an overactive bowel. Well, there certainly isn't any other part of you that's overactive. Well, changing the subject, did you see that some hooligans have driven all over the cricket pitch? Oh, a right mess it is. And after they reached that Lord's final as well. It's disgraceful. You're right. That cricket team's a credit to the village. Shame you're not still involved, Tim. I bet they still remember a few of your exploits. Yes. Who can forget my famous googly round the wicket? Well, I was thinking more about your cricket cooking accomplishments, but there was that as well. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Heartless. What can I do for you? What? what? I've been what? But that's not fair. You can't do that. Mr. Heartless, please. Tim, what's happened? That was Mr. Heartless, my boss. I've been made redundant. <laughs> and on that bombshell, we must leave it for this week. Will Tim be able to find another job? Will Stan get his pie ointment on time? Will Jessica's mum prove she's one sandwich short of a picnic? Will Brenda persuade Stan to dress up as the Incredible Hulk? And will Grandad and Mrs Prodworthy sow their winter veg? All will be revealed in next week's exciting episode of The Snatch Ups. <laughs> What can I say, guys? Absolutely fantastic. I didn't know quite what to expect, but um, it's absolutely brilliant. So, uh, so well done, and we can't wait for the future instalments. <laughs> Neither can we. Neither can we. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. So listen, everybody, that about wraps up today's call. Uh, we thought it would be about half an hour long. It's actually gone on for about three quarters of an hour. I hope that was okay with everybody. Thank you so much for all the speakers for dialing in and giving their wonderful pieces of information. Thank you to everybody that dialed in and, uh, or, or zoomed in to listen. Uh, as I said, it is the first one we've done. So uh, feedback is welcome. Uh, what's working for you? What isn't working for you? If you want uh, other people to come on, if you wanted anything else to happen, just, just let us know. And, uh, and we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to, um, to respond to that. Um, I'm just going to finish by asking our producer, our wonderful producer, if there's anything I've forgotten Otherwise, if not, then I'll say goodbye, everybody. Stay safe, keep warm, and uh, catch up with you all next week. Uh, producer and IT director, are we, all, are we all good to go? I think we're absolutely great. Great show, thank you. Um, the, uh, we had 39 people on, by the way, during the call. So tell more people. I think that's great. And um, we, oh, it's the same number next week. It's the same number every week. Super. So that's easy. Thank you, Olive. So thanks again, everybody. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, really massively look forward to next week and catch up with you then. And in the meantime, stay safe and uh, enjoy enjoy yourselves. Cheerio, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.